Alcohol is one of the longest used products in human history, has been used as a currency in many civilizations, and it is an ingredient for three out of the ten most consumed beverages. And to stay in the spirit of things, I'll be drinking along while recording this video. So you might want to turn on subtitles. And if you want to join me and it's legal for you to drink, then feel free to join me. After all, idle hands are the devil's tools. Hey, it wouldn't be the first time people use my videos as a drinking game. We don't know when people first consumed alcohol, but we do know we were not the first. There are many species who have evolved defense mechanisms against alcohol. Bats in Latin America eat fermented fruits with ease. Certain species of bees do not allow drunk bees to return to their hive, while the pen-tailed tree shrew spends two hours every day drinking fermented palm nectar without ever getting drunk. Because fermentation is a common natural process, we cannot be certain when humans first consumed alcohol. The best guesses of scientists point out that humans likely figured out fruits fermented when held in some sort of container and could be consumed for a light buzz. The very first evidence of humans intentionally creating alcohol comes from China at around 7000 BCE. Researchers analyzed the chemical composition of a jar and found a concoction of fermented rice, honey, and hawthorn leaves, which was likely an intentional method to create wine. So let's raise a glass of wine to the first alcoholic beverage in recorded history. Whether winemaking spread from China or was invented independently elsewhere, we don't know. But we do know that a thousand years later, the first grapevines were cultivated in the Caucasus. And by the year 4000 BCE, Mesopotamia created a thriving winemaking industry. But so far every alcoholic drink came from fermented fruits. This is how wine is made. But in Mesopotamia, people learned of a new method to create alcohol. They put grain in hot water, which over the course of a few hours added alcohol to the liquid. And so the first beer was created which is fermented grains rather than fermented fruits. And so, let us raise our cup to the very first beer in human history. Cheers! And while the knowledge of wine production took thousands of years to mature into an industry with vineyards and professional winemakers, beer only took about 500 years to create the very first brewery. This was in Egypt, in Heraconpolis, producing about 1100 liters of beer every day. And it's in ancient Egypt that we find the first writings of how they used alcohol. Some things are different. For example, beer was used as payment and to quench thirst. This was in a time before modern sanitation, meaning water was far more likely to be polluted than beer. And Beer only had about 1% alcohol at the time. But there are also a lot of things that haven't changed. It was used recreationally during festivals and feasts, as a social lubricant to help people open up, and played an important role in various religious rituals. Over time, beer became as important to the Babylonians in the Middle East as it was to the Egyptians. In Babylon, the first laws concerning alcohol were laid down in the Code of Hammurabi, but rather than talking about the consumption of alcohol, it only addressed the fair commerce of alcohol. And the Egyptians and the Middle Easterners exported their wine and beer across the Mediterranean Sea and to India. And it's here in India that people found a third way of making alcoholic beverages. In 1700 BCE, people discovered how to ferment honey and turn it into a drink. And so let's raise our flagon to another dead dragon because there's only one drink we need. Mead. Mead making became especially popular in these colder regions, such as Nepal, Central Europe or Russia. 
This is because keeping bees was usually easier than harvesting enough grains or fruits. And around this time, India made another major scientific discovery in the field of alcohol. Distillation. You see, when yeast converts sugars or carbohydrates into alcohol, it can only naturally do so up to a certain point. But with distillation, this alcohol could be extracted, allowing a higher percentage of alcohol in people's drinks. And so India created the very first liquor. While today liquor means that it contains at least 15% alcohol, back then the technology only allowed for a few percentage points of alcohol. While the rest of the world drank meat, beer and wine, China shifted towards drinking Huangju, which is a type of rice wine. China, how could you? But it actually makes sense as rice cultivation allows you to produce a lot more calories than with other types of grains. And this type of drink has remained popular with Chinese all the way to today. Now, back in the West, Rome rose to prominence. And they figured out how to make wine age and constructed vineyards across their empire. They considered wine to be democratic because it was consumed by all the people, from the highest noble to the lowest slave, man and woman, peasant and aristocrat. It was such an important product that when Rome's borders expanded, so too had the wine trade to provide all the Roman soldiers and colonists with sufficient wine. And while the Romans did have access to beer, they preferred wine. In fact, Romans liked their wine so much that they often noted, disparagingly, that the Germanic peoples liked to drink beer. And in this regard, nothing has really changed. Just to add a small personal story. When I lived in Berlin, it was impossible not to see at least someone drinking beer in public. I honestly thought that I was in all the wrong neighborhoods and the people around me were alcoholics. So I asked them and no, they weren't alcoholics, they were just German. At the shop, drinking beer. In the train, drinking beer. At work on the phone next to me talking to customers, drinking beer. When the Middle Ages rolled around, Middle Eastern scientists improved upon the distillation process by inventing the distillation still. This allowed people to get higher percentages of alcohol out of their distillation process. And most importantly, they discovered ethanol. Ethanol is the alcoholic chemical that makes people drunk. But while many inventions into alcoholic beverages originated in the Middle East, it's also the place where Islam rooted itself. And with Islam came a negative view on consuming alcohol, leading to its prohibition. And such control of alcohol by states and religions is quite common throughout history. In the 20th century, the USA tried to prohibit the production of alcohol while the USSR tried to limit the sale of alcohol. And while it's often thought of as a very modern thing for governments to do, it's actually a very old practice. As a Chinese commentator nearly 2700 years ago said, people will not do without beer. To prohibit it and secure total abstinence from it is beyond the power even of sages. Hence, therefore, we have warnings on the abuse of it. And this commentator was right. Throughout history, there have been thousands of cases of governments and religions trying to control alcohol sales or production. While many Islamic societies banned the substance, ancient Egypt worshipped Osiris, the god of beer, among other things. But Roman Catholicism, however, believes that wine can literally turn into the blood of their god and has often joined prohibition movements. So far, 
such bands have either not have enough data to make a conclusion or they are complete failures because people will produce or import alcohol illegally in the USA and USSR people brewed their own alcohol which were usually of lower quality causing permanent damage to its drinkers all of which could have been avoided if they had just opened a few history books making this a great example of why learning history is important time for a drink by the 15th century the process of distillation finally allowed for proper liquor to be produced and with higher alcohol content came the introduction of new types of drinks too many to mention all at once but to give a few examples a whiskey which is a distilled alcoholic beverage made from fermented grain mash brandy which is distilled wine and gin which is distilled juniper wine and gin actually has an interesting story it was originally called Genever in Dutch but the English pronounced it Geneva and when it reached France the people shortened it to just gin and by 1743 England produced 18 million gallons of gin every year in the 19th century British soldiers in British India drank their malaria medicine in tonic water but this was bitter so soldiers added water sugar lime and gin to improve the taste and thus gin and tonic was born die nacht is jong und der teufel lacht komm wir schenken uns jetzt ein while afro eurasia was inventing more and more types of alcoholic drinks it is important that we don't forget the americas either Unfortunately, we don't have as detailed a history of the Americas. We do know that the production of alcohol probably never reached further north than where the south of the USA is today. Many millions of people had no idea alcohol even existed until the Europeans arrived. When the Europeans did arrive, the Native Americans gladly traded European alcoholic drinks in exchange for local resources. In Central America, people made wine out of cocoa since at least 1100 BCE, meat made from local honey, and even beer made from corn. They also had their own unique type of alcoholic drink called pulk, which is white and has a sour yeast-like taste which you can still buy today if you want to the europeans soon colonized the americas and started harvesting sugarcane using slave labor some of those slaves discovered that molasses a byproduct of the sugar refining process could be fermented into alcohol eventually someone added distillation to this process and created the very first modern rum ironically this made the slave trade even worse as sugar was now even more profitable to produce over time rum became associated with piracy this is because many privateers in the caribbean started trading in rum when rum overtook brandy as the most traded alcoholic beverage in the caribbean sailors were starting to get paid in rum when those privateers became pirates their fondness of rum remained and so the association between rum and piracy was established and so join me with a yo ho ho and a bottle of rum mm. in the 19th century the industrial revolution changed the lives of people in a significant way more factories were being built meaning a lot more people were needed to man the factories which in turn meant that a lot of people started living in cities society at the time wasn't prepared to deal with this urbanization long work days few vacations people packed into cities filled with disease while at the same time 
those same people started forming a middle class. And so, with more problems and more money, many people found escape from their harsh reality in alcohol. But rather than dealing with the underlying problems industrialization was creating, many organizations blamed alcohol. High crime rates, poverty, disease, they were all blamed on alcohol. And in a world where people didn't have a proper grasp on sociology, economics and biology, it's easy to come to this conclusion. But as alcohol seemed to cause more problems, scientists started using all the new technologies of industrialization to understand exactly what alcohol was. What is it made of? How is it created? What effects does it have on people? Louis Pasteur discovered the connection with microscopic yeast cells and the fermentation process. He discovered that yeast cells convert sugar into alcohol and carbon dioxide, which he discovered in the 1850s. But he didn't discover the mechanism itself. Various scientists would add to this work over the next hundred years, figuring out the exact process of turning sugar into alcohol, a process which is far too complicated for me to explain in a history video. So I left a link in the description. But by 1940, the process was finally understood and was named the emden meyerhoff panas pathway. So humans only understand how alcohol is created for less than a century. As our technology improved, humans gained access to more safe drinks. And so people moved away from alcohol. Coffee, tea and water replaced alcoholic beverages. And with this societal change and scientific understanding, humans started treating alcohol very differently now that it wasn't needed anymore. For example, while in the past we used very broad rules such as moderation, today we have very specific rules, such as specific limits on alcohol consumption while driving a vehicle, limiting the sale of alcohol for certain ages, and putting safety labels on alcoholic products. And as our understanding of psychology increased, we came to understand the underlying reasons for alcohol abuse. So now we have support groups for people who get addicted, finally giving humanity a tool to combat negative effects of alcohol. And for those of us who don't have issues with it, we now know that alcohol also causes various positive effects, such as reduced chances of coronary heart disease, osteoporosis, and increased longevity. And this is the history of alcohol. If you liked this video, then please like and subscribe for more content like this. If you didn't get all the references in the video, I left a playlist for you with all the drinking songs mentioned in this video in the description below. This was Avery from History Scope. Thank you for watching. Oh, and remember, don't drink and drive.